Stay tuned. Coming up on this episode, we discuss the processes used by high reliability organizations. The concept is being embraced by many hospitals throughout the United States and arguably for good reason. The principles of high reliability organizations have direct applications for first responders also. This episode focuses on helping you to understand the processes used by high reliability organizations. But first, let's pay the bills. Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. Hello and welcome to episode 276 of the Situation Awareness Matters show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to help you to understand how to improve situational awareness and high-risk decision-making for individuals and teams who work in high-stress, high-consequence, time-compressed environments with changing conditions. The SA Matters mission is simple. We want to help you see the bad things coming in time to prevent bad outcomes. I'm coming to you today from my office in St. Paul, Minnesota, having just returned from delivering two situational awareness programs for the Odessa, Texas Fire Department. This is the second visit to Odessa, and I'm really appreciative of their faith and confidence in my message and for inviting me back. Today's feature segment is brought to you by Sims You Share. Sims You Share is a simple and affordable way to help you develop and practice situational awareness skills. You can quickly build sims from your own photos to simulate almost any kind of incident, including active threat scenarios. And the new Sims You Share Command Training Center now lets you conduct multi-company drills over the internet so you can even run drills while your companies stay in station. Check them out at simsyoushare.com. All right, we're going to jump into today's feature segment where we talk about the processes used by high reliability organizations. There's a lot being talked about these days on the concepts of high reliability organizations. The concepts being embraced by hospitals throughout the United States and arguably for good reasons. The principles of high reliability organizations also have direct applications to first responders. This episode focuses on helping you to understand some of the overarching concepts of high reliability organizations and how it might apply to us. In the previous episode, 275, I discussed the traits of highly reliable organizations. In this episode, I'm going to address the processes used by those HROs. Sensitivity to operations. HROs realize that manuals and policies are in a constant state of change. They are ever mindful that the complexity of the systems in which they work are constantly changing. When anomalies and problems arise in their systems, HROs work quickly to identify and eliminate any potential errors that could occur. Maintaining situational awareness is important for staff at all levels because it is the best and perhaps the only way anomalies, potential errors, and actual errors can quickly be identified and addressed. Sensitivity to operations reduces the number of errors and allows errors to be quickly identified and fixed before their consequences become larger. HROs have a reluctance to simplify. HROs refuse to simplify procedures and operations to make things easier. They ignore the excuses and explanations offered for the difficulties and the problems they face. HROs understand and accept the fact that their work is complex and do not accept simplistic solutions for challenges confronting complex and adaptive systems. 
They understand their systems can fail in ways that have never happened before. And it is nearly impossible to identify all the ways in which their systems could fail in the future. This does not mean that HROs do not work to make processes as simple as, pro as possible. They do. What it does mean is many members are encouraged to recognize the range of things that might go wrong and not assume that failures and potential failures are the result of a single simple cause. HROs strive to build diverse teams and use the experiences of team members who understand the complex nature of their field to continually refine their decision-making methods. HROs have a preoccupation with failure. HROs spend a lot of time focusing on predicting and eliminating catastrophes rather than reacting to them. This is one lesson that seems to be enormous value to public safety organizations. HROs constantly evaluate their performance as though they may have missed something that places employees, customers, citizens, or the environment at risk. Near-miss events are viewed as opportunities to improve current systems by examining strengths, determining weaknesses, and devoting resources to improve and address them. Near misses are not viewed as proof that the system has enough checks in it to prevent a catastrophe. Such an approach serves as only to encourage complacency rather than reliability. Instead, near-miss events are viewed as opportunities to learn and understand what went wrong in the early stages of the process that could be prevented in the future through improved processes. A deference to expertise. HROs develop and nurture a culture where leaders defer decision-making to the person with the most knowledge relevant to the issues that they are confronting. The premise for this deference is logical. The most experienced member and the highest ranking member may not have access to the same information. In HROs, the culture is one that requires staff at all levels to be comfortable sharing information and concerns with others and to be supported, even commended, when they do so. This de-emphasis on hierarchy and formal chain of command is essential for organizations to prevent and respond correctly to fix problems fast. Resilience. HROs pay close attention to how quickly they are able to contain errors and improvise when difficulties do occur. The goal is for the systems to continue to function despite setbacks. HROs are not naive, however. Ever. They assume that despite all the safeguards they have in place, the system can fail in unanticipated ways. Where HROs differ from many public safety organizations is they prepare their system failures for their system failures by training members to perform quick situational assessments, working effectively as a team that defers to expertise and practicing how they would respond when there is a system failure. Compare your department's processes to those used by HROs. Identify opportunities to make small incremental improvements that may bring you into alignment with those used by HROs. Developing and implementing the changes that create an HRO culture is not easy, nor is it something that can be done by one person. It requires a commitment from across the organization and the will of the leaders throughout and the membership to embrace these processes. 
Here's some discussion questions for you. Compare the processes listed above with your department. Discuss how HRO principles could improve the safety of your members. Discuss how your department could start implementing HRO processes in your operation. Discuss opportunities and challenges that you would need to face to overcome, to create a culture that embraces high reliability. I think Rich's, Rich's ability to, to, to connect with any crowd, that's a, that's a gift that he has and, it, and it's easily transferable. This is the second or third time that I've heard him speak. There's some teeth uh, to the information that he, that he brings. It's been really good. Good mixes. He knows when to throw in a joke here and there to get you back involved. Some tools. Um, I'm a new lieutenant, so very, very interesting. And some of these things I can take back to the station and use with some of the new firefighters I have on my crew. Something to get you thinking about your job more. Big picture type stuff. I've seen him before. A good review for sure. I have heard him before, yes. After he speaks, there's usually an enlightenment because now they're more aware of what's going on around them and what they're experiencing as they're responding to calls. He's, he's very, very knowledgeable. I'm enjoying it so far. And that intuition, that's a big one. Um, the video that he just showed up here, we're getting a lot out of this. this is, I think this is a really good seminar, especially for new people and old. So I think it's, it's very informative. This talk gives us more ammunition to, to do all three. They're relatable to what we have experienced or very well could experience, so he makes it easy to let the knowledge sink. I mean, it's awesome. A lot of stories you can usually relate to yourself and, and calls you have been on, you know, aha moment. Like, he just helps you focus on picking out the right things. It's, it's awesome. It's a refresher and keeps my eyes open. It's good stuff. If people listen to the message that he has, it's an incredible message delivered by a very com compassionate person. Strategy and tactics are going to always change. Situational awareness is it doesn't change. You're all, it's always there. He's got some good stories to tell and he's very thorough with his stories and it's uh, interesting listening to him. Very clear speaker and he, he talks um, on our level because he's been there, he's been in the trenches. I think he's doing well and I'm looking forward to the second half. If you've been listening to the episodes over the last couple of months, you have heard me mention this is our fifth anniversary. I'm so excited about that. And I thought it'd be good to do a giveaway to celebrate that. But along the way, I learned that there are rules and laws that should be followed if you're going to do a giveaway properly. And I want to give some stuff away. But in fact, I can't call it a giveaway because that's not a legal term. I have to call it a sweepstakes. So we're going to have a sweepstakes eventually at some point here. Hang with me because I'm learning a lot about sweepstakes, including the rules and disclosures that I have to do and how to do it all legally. And of course, I want to do it legally, which unfortunately means there's going to be a delay and a process and rules and all the stuff I would have rather have avoided, but I can't. The good news is that the prize package continues to grow and is worth over $2,000 now. So it'll be a good sweepstakes when we get to where we can do it right. The Situation Awareness Matters show was launched in 2014 with a purpose to give a platform to those who've had near-miss events and to share their stories. When I'm on the road delivering classes on Situation Awareness, I often ask attendees about their near-miss events that they've had and they share some amazing stories. Those stories motivated me to launch this podcast in the first place. So those lessons could be shared with a bigger audience. You. The Situation Awareness Matters show, podcasted as SA Matters Radio, and our companion video program, SA Matters TV on YouTube, along with other audio and video content, have been downloaded over 800,000 times. I'm very thankful for your support, and I'm very honored to have this platform to share these amazing stories. If you like the show, please do me a solid favor, subscribe. It's free and it's easy. For the audio version of the show, just search for SA Matters Radio on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. For the video version, subscribe to SA Matters TV on YouTube. And if you find the show valuable, i really appreciate it if you'd give it a rating and write a review. Your ratings and reviews help others to find the show. And more importantly, your feedback inspires me to want to work harder for you. 
Since 2007, Situation Awareness Matters instructors have helped more than 1,300 organizations and have trained over 80,000 individuals to improve high-risk decision-making. This has included first responders, industrial workers, military personnel, business leaders, medical professionals, utility workers, highway workers, public transportation operators, school bus drivers, aviation workers, oil refinery process operators, and more. If you work in a high-risk, high-consequence, decision-making environment, we're here to help improve your safety and your survival and to help you accomplish the most important mission of all. And that is to go home to the ones who love you. I'd like to take a moment to honor and thank the companies, organizations, agencies, and associations that have hosted uh, recent Situational Awareness Matters training for their team members. The Safety Institute Conference, Syncrude Canada Oil Refinery, the National Volunteer Fire Council Summit, the National Fire Protection Association Conference, the Itasca County Emergency Communications Center, and the Odessa Fire Department. If you're interested in knowing where, where we're going to be upcoming, so you might be able to join us for a program, uh, here's the schedule. On July 11 and 12th, I'll be doing some consulting for an industrial facility in Wisconsin, just north of Madison. On July 15 and 16, at the Southeast Texas Regional Advisory Council EMS Committee Training Seminars, in Houston, Texas. We're doing two of those, one on the north side of Tex uh, Houston and one on the south side of Houston. July 24 and 25 at the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is my third visit to the Air Force Academy and I'm very appreciative for your faith and confidence in my message. July 26 at the North Metro Fire District in Broomfield, Colorado. My second visit there. July 31 at the Evans Fire Department in Evans, Colorado, my second visit there. August 8th and 9th, Fire Rescue International, Atlanta, Georgia. I've presented there for about the last 15 consecutive years. August 14th to 16th, the Lansing Fire Department, Michigan, first visit there. August 17th, the Ingham County Fire Chiefs Association, Michigan, also my first visit there. August 27th to 29th, at the Voluntary Protection Programs Participant Association National Conference, in New Orleans, Louisiana. And that's my first opportunity to present at that conference. If you want to see the locations of all the upcoming events, just head over to the samatters.com website. And the schedule is under the Training Programs tab at the top of the homepage. If you're interested in hosting a program, just click on the Contact Us tab on the top of the homepage and I'll give you a call. We'll get something set up. It's really easy to do. If you want to become part of the SA Matters community of learners, there's several ways you can do that. Check the show notes for how to get connected by signing up for our monthly newsletter, subscribing to the radio podcast, subscribing to the SA Matters TV channel on YouTube, and how to follow us on the social media channels of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. There we share ideas about how to improve situation awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to improve the skills of critical thinking and resilient problem solving. Well, that's it. Episode 276 of the Situational Awareness Matters show is complete. Thank you to our platinum sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to our feature segment sponsor, Sims You Share. And thank you to our associate sponsor, Chief Miller. Thank you to all the companies, agencies, and organizations that have hosted Situational Awareness Matters training programs. Thank you to all the organizations that have hosted the live stream program, where I come to your organization live via the internet to train your members. Thank you to the more than 3,000 students and graduates of the highly acclaimed Situational Awareness Matters Online Academy. The feedback I've received from Academy graduates is just amazing and humbling, and I thank you for that. Most importantly, though, thank you, the listeners and viewers of this show, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. 
You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.